This week's Four Questions Journalist Spotlight is brought to you by Lefts Atlanta Media, Atlanta's best journalist database. Subscribe at leftsatlantamedia.com. All right, we are here with another edition of our Four Questions Journalist Spotlight, and we are talking with Mara Davis, who is, gosh, the resume is is so long. Uh, I'm going to zip through some things, and then and then you're going to tell me what I forgot, and then we're going to talk about other things. Okay, so. Z93, Dave FM, CNN, WABE, Music Coordinator, Booker at Adult Swim on Cartoon, WGST, Atlanta Eats, contributed to Pace Magazine, Rough Draft Atlanta, and now her own company, Mara Davis, Mara Davis Productions. Um, okay, wow, I did that in like eight seconds. That's pretty good, huh? Well, Mitch, uh, first off, good to be here. Second off, that just shows that I'm old. I've done a lot of things. <laughs> right? And then, but that's, that's, that's good. That's good. You know, it's, I always tell folks, it's good to have a diverse set of interests and a diverse revenue stream, right? You know? Well, it's also um, a result of just chasing and trying to survive in the media business. So while it sounds like a very long list, and it is, I don't know, hearing it myself, I'm like, wow, I did all that. <laughs> but it's also a function of just trying to to survive, stay relevant, stay busy. And um, I'm really proud of all of that. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've worked off, I mean, just some, the list is just in great places. I mean, some of them, you know, GST is not what it once was. It's it's totally changed now, you know, and uh you know, CNN, CNN, you know, the, things change, but I always tell folks, you know, you can't look back and say, you know, I wish this was still doing this. You know, it was, it was a great thing when you were doing it and, uh, you know, thing, things well, change and move well, on, right? Look, the radio career, I mean, you know, my, my career match was, was definitely based on radio. I mean, that's really where I come from, but unfortunately the radio business is just not what it once was. And it just really forced me to pivot. And it's an interesting spot to be in when your whole career you're identified as one thing is that, you know, the gal on the radio um, and that's, you know, how they refer to it. It was like, <laughs> you were the midday girl. You weren't like, you know, you know what I mean? Like there was like one woman on every radio station. Um, and by the way, it's still like that in 2023, but I digress. I had to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my career. And, and it's, it's actually, you know, when I look back on that, Dave FM turned into a sports station and I had to really figure that out. And, and it was kind of the best thing that ever happened. And I'm really glad it happened 11 years ago and not now, uh, because I think it was much easier for me to pivot into other things than it would have been today as trying to figure out like, whoa, what now? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I got laid off from Turner in yeah, 2002 and, you know, if I, had been there 15, 20 years and then gotten laid off. It, it, I think it would have been a different, I would have been a different person trying to start a company or do something different at that point. So, but like, you know, I don't know, as, as some people say, things happen for a reason or they happen at the right time. And I, th I think, I think people take their opportunities and do what they want with them when, you know, when bad things happen, they totally, they make something better out of it. Totally. You know, I forgot to I forgot to mention. I think I saw on your LinkedIn page. What where was the first place that you worked in radio? So outside of college radio, the first place I worked in radio was actually this the summer, my first su summer of college, when I had come home after my freshman year, and I needed to get a job, and I was so interested in radio, and it was my mom, Arlene Davis who really suggested that I get an internship at a radio station. Excuse me. Oh my God. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so you don't have to edit that out. People call. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay. So um, I went to this radio station called power 96, which I believe still exists in Miami. And I was an intern there and I really learned uh, the promotions department in radio and I answered phone calls for the DJs, the legendary Sonny Fox and, and, uh, and, you know, like Miami radio, my background. And so that was my first 
even though it technically wasn't a job, that was my first internship at, you know, besides college radio. Right. And once I started at Power 96, I was like, okay, this, I, I love this atmosphere and I want to do this. And at what point did you, did you get into more of the music part of it? Because that was such a, a big part of what you did for so many, so many years. Yeah, that was college radio. Okay. So I went to Curry College, which is a really small school outside of Boston. And I worked at the radio station WMLN, which stands for Milton, Massachusetts. Okay. Um, even though <laughs> we used to call it the, 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 the melon and we'd get in trouble for that. It was there, Boston radio in the late 80s, early 90s, where I was getting turned on to like you know, the Pixies and the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones and R.E.M. we were playing and all of the, you know, that great golden age of college radio. And so that's really where the music came in. And then I grew up listening to radio. I mean, I love Dr. Demento and Rock Over London and uh, Casey Kasem, American Top 40. Like yeah. I was into all that stuff. I just loved radio and music in general. So that was just kind of like my hobby where other kids were doing sports. I was listening to the radio. So fast forward to to today, and you've got kind of a couple of different things you're doing now. So walk us through kind of the different things that you're doing now, uh, you know, with news, newspapers and and the magazines and your own your own company. So after radio, after I had left, you know, not by my choice at Dave FM. I had t taken a variety of jobs. I did Atlanta East, which you mentioned, which that was the radio show there at WGST, which I did. I did WABE because, you know, those were the only radio outlets that were really, you know, knocking on my door. I mean, everybody said that, you know, you were on the radio so long in Atlanta. Everybody's going to call you. And that just did not happen. So I had to find all kinds of different avenues. And so that led me to Atlanta Eats, that led me to public radio, that read, led me to, I had done some on-camera stuff. Um, so I started, I got this random inquiry about Adult Swim, which you mentioned. My friend worked there, and so they were looking for a talent booker for their streaming shows. And these were shows, these like it was like this incubator of talent of shows that they had on their website only, sometimes on social media, and they needed somebody to book talent, bands, famous people, whatever it was, jugglers, whatever. And my friend, Ollie Green, suggested, oh, you should, you should apply for this. And I was like, I, I'm not cool enough for Adult Swim. I don't know if this is my jam. And so she's like, listen, just go in for the meeting. And so I met with the VP of digital content, Matt Harrigan, at the time. And he's one of the original creators of the Space Ghost, um, you know, real like lifer at Adult Swim. He's no longer there, but like really one of those people who just really was there when Adult Swim was just like bubbling up into, you know, loved, pop culture coolness. I love Space so, Ghost. That was, Space Ghost yes, was such the, the, the talk show version. I mean, that was such a yes, great show. Yeah. Yes. Well, that was, um, you know, that was that was uh, like really one of my career uh, people that, you know, Matt. Uh, I met with Matt and he was like, you know, everybody, this would be great <laughs> for you. Why don't you try it for three months and we'll see where we are. And that ended up being seven years working there. Um, so I was a full-time contractor. And so I really learned how to do talent booking. And because working at a place like an adult swim, it gave me so much cachet. It opened so many doors for me. And I just networked like crazy and then i started getting other talent booking jobs i got hired by mailchimp to book a shirley manson project i got hired by uh, different people doing different i ended up getting a gig with npr's bullseye which i still work with them now booking all their talent so it was like suddenly i was just booking talent for all these podcasts and shows and wow. that's when my business really started to fall into place and since all that's happening, I started working with individual clients, really working on their media and PR and branding. And I would say a company, but it's really, it's boutique because it's only me. Um, sure. But uh, it's, it's, I, it's, it's a really great feeling. And, and I love it's It's taking my expertise of being on the radio and on camera for so many years and doing it for other people. And Mitch, I love it. It's a great listen. If someone came running towards me with a microphone or a camera and wanted me to be on that, I'd be super into it. I have my own podcast, but 
I, I, I get a lot of joy doing that for other people that I believe in. Well, and I think the, well, two things. I mean, the, the booking, the, the book talent booking people, I mean, that is a, it's a skill. It's an, a body of expertise in and of itself on the people I know who book for, for the networks and for even for local. I mean, that, that is a, that is a challenging thing at so many levels, uh, especially the, you know, the network folks who have to book news of the day within, you know, hours of, or minutes of, of something happening, you know, there, there's, there's an incredible skill there, but I will say, you know, it's, it's interesting that, you know, I find that sometimes companies, clients don't know how big your company is and they don't always care. Right. You know, it, it's, it's a, it becomes more a question of your, your skills and abilities. Right. And sometimes, I mean, I, I have literally, I, I had once or twice in the last 20 years, I've had prospects say, you know, we decided not to hire you because we thought you were too big for us. I'm like, I'm one guy, you know, I'm one, one guy in my, in my office. I, how, how much smaller could I get? <laughs> and so well, we looked oh, you at know, your website, man, you know, we look, you look at your website, and you look big. <laughs> I hear that too, but I also feel like, you know, I have gotten to a point now where I'm so confident in what I do that if, if I, you know, of course you're going to get like butthurt or whatever, cause you want the job. Right. And everybody wants, you, you know, you want to be showered with, you know, business and attention, so, you know, sometimes it just wasn't, it's it's not the right fit. Right. And so yeah. like, like recently I was in the running for a contract of booking a podcast with all like C-suite executives. Uh, now, uh, fully transparent, like that's not really my jam. You know, I'm more uh, entertainment industry uh, stuff. I booked some hard news stuff, but, but, you know, C-suite's not my jam. But to me, in my mind, booking c-suite people is like the easiest thing to do like uh, get name me an executive who doesn't want to talk about themselves right. for 30 right. minutes on a podcast yeah. like yeah you know you know what i mean like i got this yeah okay yeah. um but they were like well we want someone with more business experience and i was like all right well great uh, you know i could have probably had that booked for you yeah you know by the end of this week uh but I'll catch you later. Yeah. And it's fine. But it, you, know, you know what I mean? Some people, the heart wants what it wants. Yeah. You know? So and, I, and I'm good with that. I mean, there are definitely certain gigs that I've wanted um, that I didn't get. And that's, you know, that's how you live and learn and, and grow your business. And, and it makes you tougher. So talk to me about what you're doing for, for Paste and for Rough Draft. So I am a real podcast enthusiast, and this was something that came out of radio where people were like, you should tell you any podcast. I mean, I heard that like constantly between that and, oh, go work for Sirius XM, as in it's just so easy to walk in the door uh, right on Sixth Avenue with Sirius and be like, hello, I'm here. Don't you know me? Because like that day don't happen. Um, so I immersed myself in podcasts and I just became addicted to them. And and it's not a surprise that I would be so fascinated with podcasts because I love the audio medium. I mean, radio is my background. This is just what's in my blood. So, I, and I was booking already for podcasts. So the pace came around because uh, Josh Jackson, who owns Pace, uh, I reached out to him one day and I was like, how come Pace? does not have a podcast report and he was like you're right you want to <laughs> do it and so I said yes and I have to say it has opened so many doors for me it has brought me business now I will say if I am working on a particular podcast or with a company I'll always disclose that in pace because I do not write about things to, to do that like sure. Sure. I yeah. everything I write about I listen to and I love hard i ride hard for them and so rough draft just came out of that too so the pace thing's been going on for like i don't know like three years now um and again that's it's sort of like a, not a hobby but it's just like it's not like a job job i don't do it for the money but i definitely do it for my branding and 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 it and it it, it sort of pays for itself in uh and that's one thing I advise people to do when they're trying to build their brand, it's like sometimes you can't just do it for the money. You do it because number one, it works your muscle. It makes you an expert. It get opens doors for you and it can lead to business. But, you know, sometimes Mitch, it's hard to explain that to you. You know, people don't want to hear that. They right. just want to see the end of the rainbow. 
Yeah. Um, so that that's that's how Pace and Rough Draft came around. Yeah, and, and I tell folks the same thing about you know this podcast and this other podcast that I just started with the PR and marketing podcast. It's it's not a revenue generator. It's a brand. It's a branding thing. And as you said, it opens doors. It's a way for me to get to know journalists that I might not know, and you know, and I I like to share it with other people, and you know, and I do these as audio and video, so it stretches my editing skills on more on, yeah. the, video, more on the video side than the than the the audio side. But you know, uh, I like learning new new things to new skills, new things to be able to do, and I you know I tell folks that it's. It's really not that hard. I was talking to somebody recently. He was saying, oh, oh, it's so hard to do a podcast. I mean, it's really not that hard. Well, you know, I think it comes down to it. It's just like, look, there's people that are like serious about things. And then there are people who are just like, you know, they want it to happen overnight. I, I can't tell you. I will take every consultation call. I do. If someone reaches out to me and they're like, I'm looking to do PR. Or I'm looking to do a podcast. Can I talk to you? And what ends up happening a lot of the times is I'll say, you need to do A, B, C, and D, and then call me back. Right. And then they never call back. It's like, I can always, I can always tell who's serious and who's just like wants an overnight miracle. I get a lot of, I call it tire kicking. You know, I get people who call me and say, yeah, I, I need PR. Well, why? Uh, Cause you know, this other doctor who, who I know is doing PR and I like, I like, you know, I think I should do it too. But I had a conversation with an attorney once and he called me, you know, we had, you had a little 15 minute call and I said, well, why do you want to do PR? He says, well, we, you know, we just want to do PR. I said, do you want more clients? Cause we're going to bring in more clients. Well, no, cause there's only four partners and we can't take on any more business. Okay. Are you, are you going to add more partners, more paralegals, more associates? No, no, we're going to stay the same size we are. We don't want to get any bigger. We're, we like where we are. So, so Bob, what's going to happen if we start doing PR and people start calling you and saying we want to hire you? He's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just you know, look, I think with PR, it it comes down to I ask, it's like, do you want to uh, return on your investment and get more business, or do you want just an ar article that you can put in your in a frame and hang in your office? Yeah. Because because the media landscape has changed so much, like. And here in Atlanta, there's so few outlets. Like I was on a call recently um, and the guy was like, and this is what was so annoying about it. He already had a national publicist, but he wanted local. He wanted more local media. And someone told him to call me. And I, I was like, your, ang your, your, your idea is not cooked yet. And what are you trying to do? And what makes you think if you're not hiring me that I would just give this over to you? Like, it, it's just, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird thing to do. I think you have to be nice to everybody. I think you, you have to give it a try, but you really have to ask those questions. If the idea or the thing isn't baked, just like your law situation, it's really not worth taking on that business. I, I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've, I don't know. The nice thing about working for yourself is, as you said, you could be particular about what you take and what you don't take, right? And yeah, I don't want to. Like, I've had to fire clients before <laughs> because I can't. I can't have that in my life. I just can't. It's, yeah. it's just I. I. It's. 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 I. You know. But I would say a couple of years ago I wasn't doing that, but now it's a little bit different because because I've I've got a lot on my plate. Right. So if folks have, I mean, obviously you can't write about every single podcast that's out there because there's a lot. So is there a criteria what do you look for in a podcast that you want to cover and, and paste well I, there are so many different kinds of podcasts mitch and and i'll be and i even say this like i'm not into um i'm not into scripted podcasts i know that there's a and that there's a lane for that um so i like a i really like documentary style podcasts that's really my jam um, you know, investigative journalism is a really big one with me, but I also love learning about things that I had no idea. Like one of my favorite podcasts over the past couple of years was one all about truckers and truck driving. And I thought it was absolutely fascinating and opened my eyes to so many different things. And I think that's really what podcasts can do because it could take, it can, it can like, you can learn about a topic in a long form way and it, it can be beautifully uh, sound designed, edited and all of that. So that's the kind of stuff that I, that I'm really looking for, but I also have a soft spot for like something that's just funny or something that's just like, you know, 
stupid or something that's goofy. So my, my, I, there's just, it's hard because there's just so much crap out there. It's weeding through, but there's really some extraordinary work that's been being done. Yeah. It's funny. I mean, this, my podcast is, is kind of specific, you know, if you're interested in PR journalism, people listen yeah. to it, but yeah, and, I love and, interview and, shows too. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I try to, you know, I got kind of, a set format that I try to stick to, but uh, okay. So uh, are there, are there podcasts that you're, you've got on your radar? You think oh, I got this on the list. I haven't listened to this one yet. What's, what's sitting out there going, I, I need time to listen um, to this one. So the ones that are like, I think the, 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 it's funny. Cause I think the two podcasts that are number one and number two in Apple right now, um, one is the retrieval, which is just, it's about a um, fertility clinic at Yale University, um, but it's about a nurse who was stealing the drugs, and these women were getting their eggs retrieved, and they were. And it's this, it's heartbreaking and eye opening and just incredible journalism. For that and there's this other one called The Girlfriends, which is all about um, it's true crime, uh, Jewish true crime. It's like ah, okay. all these. It's like this like hot Jewish doctor that everybody thought was you know the shit. <laughs> And then, like, he was not. And then it's all the women that he was with kind of cracked the case. And it is just extraordinary. And it it, it just, it's so original and so good. That that may be my favorite one of the year. Okay. So usually I'll, I'll put links in the bottom here, too. So we'll make sure that folks yeah, can those find, two, find it. Yeah, those two, and I'll plug my client, uh, which is yeah. the I've Had It podcast. Um, the I've had a podcast are two women from Oklahoma city and they just bitch and moan and about petty grievances. And they're so damn funny. And they're a true example of how a podcast can make money um, and innovate. And uh, so they're, I mean, that I, I, you know, that's my, one of my regulars, but I love interview podcasts too. Or like, I love like, like, you know, look, I love the, the daily from the New York times. And I really like Kara Swisher. I like into it with Sam Sanders about the entertainment business. I think he's really fun and fabulous, but uh, you know, it's, 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 I try to be really, really fair and write about different things. Um, but you know, also it's like not my full-time job. So, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I can kind of, you know, and then for rough draft, I, I, I try to make it topical. Like with the time we're recording, it's Beyonce weekend. So I've got a couple Beyonce podcasts for people to listen to. Oh, there you go. Um, so stuff like that. Okay. Um, all right. So now we get to the hard questions. So this is, this, this is the one that always stumps people is what is something really cool about you that people might not know? Okay, I thought about this one, <laughs> and that is people. That, sometimes people don't think about this in advance. <laughs> okay, so one thing I love arranging flowers. I love going to Trader Joe's and getting flowers and arranging them. And I think I started doing this in um, COVID because it was just so great. And I don't know that I'm that good about it, but I really do want to take a flower arranging class and really learn how to do it. It's so like. Um, you know, just not thinking. And I put on a podcast and I just arrange flowers. So I love fresh flowers. And so I know that's not a sexy one, but I, I just no, the, love that. You know, I, I think my friend, uh, Sabrina, Sabrina Cupid over at SB radio, I think she's doing some flower arranging too. I, she's had some, I don't know if it's a side gig or just a hobby, but I know she's posted on Facebook. She's been uh, some flower arrangements yeah, that she's been doing. I don't know that I, like I said, I don't know that I'm not great at it, but I love it. I do. I love having fresh flowers. It's like, I always say to people, like, you don't have to get, if you send me flowers, it's the best gift. I, I just love fresh flowers. <laughs> all right, what, what kind of flowers? What's your favorite? Um, I like it all, but I don't like carnations. No carnations, please. Okay. Um, no, 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 <laughs> nobody send Mar. No, no one said Mar Davis. No carnations. Yes. No carnations, please. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, so I really, I, you know, and, oh, I would say, get it from a local florist. Don't do like the flowers.com or any of that stuff. Like, yeah. uh, like if I'm sending flowers to someone in a different city, it is like an easy Google search away to just find out what, whatever, like best florist in this city. And you can find it. That's good. Yeah, not as many as there used to be. Right. I mean, there used to be, I'm in Oak Grove and there used to be a great little shop right, right up the street from me. And they. They didn't. They didn't survive. But there's two ladies who 
it ran oh, it for years. I mean, I love locally. I love adaptation. <laughs> I think they're awesome. And I love Fox Gloves and Ivy. I think they do a great job. I mean, there are just so many great ones in in the Atlanta area. I mean, they're just cool. yeah. All right. So now now we're gonna we're gonna hit the lightning round. So mm-hmm. you don't have to get long answers for these. They're just kind of short okay. answers. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna. Usually, I give people an option. Last book you've read, of last podcast you've listened to, but I'm not gonna ask you the podcast question. Well, right, because I'll give you like 25. <laughs> All right. So last last book that you read. Okay, so I'm currently reading it right now, and it's Demon Copperhead, and it is blowing my mind. Ooh, okay, author? Who's the author? Oh, my gosh, it's Catherine. Oh, my gosh, I don't know it off the top of my head, but just look it up, Demon uh, Copperhead. I'll, 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 I'll look it up and put it in the notes. Okay. Yes, uh, yes. Favorite local restaurant? I, I have two, and that's um, Aria, because I've been going there for so long, and all my special occasions are there, and Jerry Coscaro Cluscalo, the staff owner, is just fantastic and it's consistently good and it just has so many memories attached to it for me. And then I also really love locally, close to where I live, I love Ah Mano in the Old Fourth Ward. I think it's really extraordinary, simple Italian food and a cool homey vibe. It's, I'm sorry, tell me it's called? Ah Mano. Ah Mano, okay. A M A N O. Okay, always looking for good Italian. Yeah, oh, um, it's so good. You need right. a reservation though, because it's tiny. Oh, okay, that's good to know. All right, uh, yep. and, that's, and that's in the Old Fourth Ward. Mm-hmm. By Palm okay. City Market. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, favorite guilty pleasure. Okay. TV shows about cheerleaders. Oh. I watch every. I watch every single season of Making the Team, the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Okay, they canceled it, which I'm so upset about. Um, that I don't know what it is about cheerleaders and the whole business of it. And I loved Cheer on Netflix, which both season, and of course, that has a lot of scandal and drama. Like in the second season, it's the whole thing. But stuff about cheerleaders and were, marching bands. Were you a cheerleader as a kid? Nope. Nope, I think I because I never could be and I never was, but it is this weird thing like the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders and like every time I'm at a, like a football game, I always am very, you know, invested in the cheerleaders. I'm a yeah, it's, I, 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 you know, uh, there's a gal locally, Nikki Williams. She used to be the captain of the Atlanta Falcons. The cheerleaders squad she used to come on my radio show all the time. Mm-hmm. I still talk to her. I'm always asking her cheerleader questions. I, yeah. Um, Favorite local getaway? New York City. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> yeah. not local. That's I, not no, local. Wait a minute. That's I, not local. I try. You know what? I try to think about that one. And and I don't like have a burning passion, really. Maybe Savannah in the winter. I don't like it in a swampy okay. summer. Yeah. Yeah, there is that. Okay. Favorite non-work hobby? I mean, just binge watching. I mean, I guess that sort of is work but like man there's nothing like a great binge watch that you just get lost in on a weekend and you're just watching it and watching it i just love content what's your last binge watch uh i'm watching the sex in the city which is unfortunate it's but it's so great <laughs> it's so bad but it's so great and then i just finished uh all righteous gemstones and that was great that you know we started that one and we didn't we didn't we got distracted from that one my wife's been watching. You know what? It's not. It's not all great, you know. But that's one of my favorite. That's another hobby. One of my favorite um, topics of discovery is um, evangelical corruption, like mm-hmm. shiny happy people. That documentary about the Duggars. Like I could have watched eighteen more episodes about it. The way down, you know, about that crazy church and outside of Nashville. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any of that Nexium cult. <laughs> Give it to me, inject it in my veins, like any of that, like Lula Row, all that. I love that. Awesome. Okay, so before we forget, I don't want to forget. I want to make sure. I want you to tell me your website, the website URL, so everybody hears, and and I'll put the graphics in that too. Great. So it's maradavis dot com. That's it. Maradavis dot com. That's easy. That's that's nice easy to simple. remember. All right. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um. Anything else we haven't talked about that, that you want to mention? I think we kind of kind of covered. We did a good lightning round of, of twenty minutes or so, and I think uh, great. 
Great. Great. Uh, the only thing I would say is um, the best thing that people can do is pay it forward. Take the call, volunteer your time when you, you can, be nice to people. Um, you know, I remember a lot of the times when people, when, when I was really chasing a lot of stuff, whether it be radio, TV, PR, booking, this, that, the other. And I remember the people that were nice to me and sometimes like an extra, like returning an email or just going up at an event or um, texting someone to say hi, that stuff goes a very, very long way. A part of this business and being in media and PR is your personal skills. And so I would just tell everybody um, it, when you can pay it forward, do that. That, that's a great way to close. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this uh, so that's that's our episode for the week. Uh, as always, uh, tune in uh, two weeks for our next episode. And uh, if you're looking for our directory of Atlanta Media, go to leftsatlantamedia.com. And oh, and make sure you hit the subscribe button here if you're watching this on on YouTube. If you're watching, if you're following on Amazon or apple podcast or hit the hit the follow button you know do do all those things and uh we'll see you soon